Okay, good evening, folks. As I mentioned before, my name is Jack Ossin. I'm a long-term resident of this part of our beautiful Finger Lakes area. And I'd like to welcome you to what promises to be an interesting evening of looking at two very different perspectives on where our towns, villages, our state, and nation, even our world, should be headed in the following years in developing responsible energy choices. However, before I introduce my distinguished guests for the evening, I'd like to point out some folks who, without their help and assistance, this evening would not have occurred. The folks who participated to ensure the many details for tonight's program included members of the town board and their clerk, Sue Kranz, the members of the town board, and please stand if you're here, and I know all of them are, Tim Ritter, Supervisor George Lawson, Fred Shoemaker, Bill Holgate, and Tim Gibson. Also essential this evening were members of a subcommittee of the, of the planning board and members of the local Starkey Citizens for a Clean and Healthy Environment. Also, please stand Barb and Bob Schieser, Harry and Jean Carley, Janet Meany, Al Kopeck, Susan Walker, Connie Bixford, Phyllis uh, Maziak, thank you, and Alan Giles. Also, great appreciation to the Dundee Central School and uh, their staff, especially Tom Bennett, their technical guru who's given us several hours in setting this program up. Also to the technical folks uh, from adjacent towns without which we would not have live stream, Llewellyn Lawford, and archived video of tonight's proceedings, Chris McConkey, Bill Houston, Dave Walsack, and others. These are the folks whose unpaid interest in this topic have allowed us to witness tonight's proceedings. Please join me in showing our appreciation. I should also note the emergency exits that are located to both the rear and the front of the auditorium. Restrooms are located in the hallway in which you entered. Instead of coming left up the stairs, go to the right to the hallway. It can also be accessed through this exit up here in front of the uh, auditorium. In accordance with how well this topic has been previously debated in our community, without anger and or bullying, I request the same type of restraint here tonight. Each of our guest debaters should be allowed to freely dis develop their talking points and in so doing allow all of us to determine which position fits our individual and collective visions of how our prospective communities should proceed. Many of you know that the township of Starkey currently has a moratorium against hydrofracking and may or may not decide to zone it out as an unwanted heavy industry. As the Tarkey, Starkey Town Planning Board and Board continue to develop a comprehensive plan and will soon send the town-wide survey for developing that plan, Tonight's program is part of the town's effort to produce an educated decision on fracking. Questions for this evening's debate are to be submitted on three by five cards, which are available when you entered. If you didn't get a card and want to ask a question, you can get one now by raising your hand. At the end of each presentation by our debaters, runners or strollers will collect the questions. Please be aware that not all questions will be asked tonight as there's only so much time available. It's anticipated that after the debate, unasked questions will be grouped into categories and submitted in a general form to each of tonight's debaters for their responses and hopefully those questions and responses may be published at a later date. Our guests for this evening come from very different points of view on the title of our program. Should New York State 
and or Starkey Township allow high volume shale gas extraction. Dr. Terry Engelder, a geoscientist from Penn State, is often recognized as a major and early advocate for developing and unconventionally extracting gas from the Marcellus Shale. He reminds me that, quote, his field is how best to fracture rock formation, including dark shales like the Marcellus. Ironically or not, I, I use that same language in uh, describing uh, uh, Professor Engelder's, or Professor Engrafia's um, involvement. He expresses a belief that Marcellus gas will act as a cleaner alternative to coal and will provide the time necessary to transition to cleaner energy options commonly known as green energy. Dr. Tony Engrafia, a research engineer from Cornell University, an early developer of the technology used to fracture rock formations like the Marcellus, sees the hydrofracking technology that evolved from his initial work as a potential threat to our living environment, our health, and a growing contributor to global weather change. You can find a more extensive description of each man's vast endeavors on the back of your programs. You will also find a description of the debate process we shall follow tonight. For those on live stream, following the open presentations of up to 30 minutes, each debater will answer questions for up to two minutes each. Then up to four minutes will be allotted for direct debate on any differences noted in answering the questions. I will attempt to allot equal time during the direct debate period. Now we're going to flip a coin to see which of the debaters will go first, and I'll ask Mr. Engelder to call the first uh, flip of the toy coin and uh, Dr. Uh, Ingrafia to call the second. This will be to see who goes first in the initial presentation. And it is tails, your choice, doctor. Dr. Engelder has chosen to go first. And another flip to see who goes first or last in the final closing comments. Yes. Tails again. Your choice, Dr. Engelder. Okay. Dr. Engelder goes first and last. Thank you. And now the opening presentation from Dr. Engelder. 